What is up, everybody? Welcome back to Sequence. I'm your host, Trevor Plouffe, and today we are talking Braves in six. The Atlanta Braves have defeated the Houston Astros in six games. Who could have seen that coming? I'll tell you who. Some jabroni back in March tweeted that out, and my, oh my, what a prediction it was. Now, one of the biggest at-bats or plays in the game was Jorge Soler versus Luis Garcia in the third inning. And that is the at-bat we'll be going over today. There were cutters. There were sliders. There were heaters. There was two men on base. There was a moon balloon. All the things that we love here on Seekins, and we're going to break it down for you pitch by pitch, frame by frame like we always do. But you guys know the drill. We'll get the ad right here, and I will catch you on the flip side. You, look at me right now. Are you Roman ready? That's the question I have for you. And if you're not, it's okay. 52% of men between the ages of 40 and 70 experience some form of ED. That's a lot of people. That's the majority of men experience it. The thing is, it's treatable. We can do it at GetRoman.com sequence. That's all you have to do. It's very discreet. You can do it online. You'll have a visit with a U.S. licensed healthcare professional and they'll determine your course of action. If 100% of those 52% don't go to GetRoman.com, I don't know what we're doing. There's no shame in it. Let's end the stigma on that. If a majority of people are experiencing something, let's take care of it. Roman's trying to do that for you. And all you got to do is go to GetRoman.com slash sequence. And if you're prescribed, you get $15 off your first month of ED treatment. You got to make sure you're ready to have confidence and control this fall be Roman ready. People, let's do this. Let's all be Roman ready together. GetRoman.com slash sequence. Please go do it now. All right, go to the vid. The first stop of this episode is to Jorge's baseball reference page. I want to give you an idea of what kind of player he is. He's 6'4 from La Habana, Cuba. You guys know I love my Cuban ball players. And he started out with the Cubs. And you can see here there's kind of a common theme here. I know 24 games played in his rookie season. We don't really mind that. But then it's 101, it's 86, it's 35, it's 61. Hasn't been on the field a ton. So he wins the World Series with the Cubs in 2016. The following year they trade him to the Royals. And then in 2019 he stays on the field. 162 and he gets the 48 homers. He leads the league. And if with those counting stats like homers and RBIs and runs scored, you just got to play. And when Jorge plays, he produces. And I think that's what the Braves were thinking when they acquired him midseason. You know, his career numbers, 331, 465, 796. That's a really good career numbers. But at the time when they acquired him, it was 192 batting average, then 288, 370, 658. So here's what the Braves were thinking. Here's his career numbers. This is what he's doing right now. That means there's some positive regression coming. He's going to play like this now. For the rest of the season, they picked him up, and it's exactly what he did. Ends up with a 358 OBP, slugging 524 for the 882 OPS. It's exactly what the Braves wanted from him. He gave them everything that they needed, especially in game six. Let's go. All right, here it is. Runners on first and second, two outs. He struck out against Garcia in the first at bat, and this first pitch here is absolutely non-competitive, but we're going to show it anyway because – it's a cutter, and we're going to be seeing a lot of those cutters and sliders in this at-bat. Second pitch right here. A good one for Garcia uh, right off of the plate, and Jorge swings and misses at it, but still nice big swing balanced on it. I like the hack right there. I know it was off the plate, but he's starting to see it. Again, cutter, cutter. That's two now he's seen. The 1-1 one, one pitch here after two cutters. He tries to go up and away here, or up and in, ends up up and away and does not get the call, probably because he set up in and the ball was away, and our boy Mike behind there said, no, 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 we're not going to give you that. But another good aggressive take by Jorge right there. So now we're sitting 2-1. We've seen cutter, cutter, fastball. Now this is an interesting pitch right here. You know he's going back to the off speed after that sequence. Um, I think Jorge does as well. But he throws a nasty one right here. Ooh, right at the bottom of the zone. They say he doesn't check his swing. Let's go to the slow-mo right here. I don't know, man. <laughs> it kind of looks like he went 
the Braves get the call, and now we're sitting 3-1 instead of 2-2, and Garcia not happy about that. That's a big difference right there, people. Jorge's like, I didn't go. Eh, not so sure about that one right here. So we're sitting 3-1 right now, and this pitch is awesome because – I think that Garcia understands that this is probably his last batter right here. Freeman's coming up next. A lefty is warming the bullpen. So there's no reason for him to just lay one in there, especially you, you have the open base there. I know it's going to load the bases, but he'd rather be careful and, and, and live on the edges here than just groove a three-run fastball, obviously. Maldonado's famously known for calling a lot of off-speed pitches as well. And Garcia drops a nasty one in here to get back in the count and move it full. Great pitch, but another good take by Soler. And now if you're counting, we got cutter, cutter, fastball, cutter, and that one was a slider. So now we're sitting four Aussie pitches to one heater. And as a hitter, you're just starting to see the shape of it. You're starting to tunnel it up. It has to start here. It can't start here or here. It has to start here. You start to see it more and more, and your eyes are like, okay, I'm getting it now. Now the 3-2 pitch. Right now, another good one. And another telling pitch, I believe, for Maldonado and for Garcia. What's up, dude? Look at that guy rocking, ready to go. 3-2 pitch right here. Now, he's calling for or showing fastball, but that ain't going to be it. Goes back down away. Oof. Gets the barrel to it right there, so Lair does. And now you're seeing it's catching more plate. And if he can get the barrel to that pitch, I mean, that's outer third quadrant right there. I know it's about belt high, but still not a terrible pitch, but Soler's getting the barrel to it now. It's the fifth off-speed pitch he's seen. So as a catcher and as a pitcher and anyone that's playing baseball, when, when a guy starts to get his barrel on pitches like that, you're like, okay, he's he's got the timing, he's got the tunnel, Maybe now it's time to switch it up. Slow-mo right here. He's out in front a little bit, but like I said, he's getting the shape. He understands what where it needs to start and all that good stuff. So you got to be thinking they're going to switch it up here. Freddie's on deck. They got everybody warming up. Garcia, again, like I said before, knows this is his last hitter. He's going to do everything he can. Oh, my goodness. Let's go back to that one. This is supposed to be up right there. And it ends up down and in. And again, he gets his barrel to it. So now you're like, okay, Jorge's feeling really, really comfortable there. The second fastball we've seen, uh, as opposed to five off-speed pitches. And Jorge, look at him. He's got everything timed up. You can't sneak a fastball right there by him, so you can't go back to that. He's starting to time your slider and your cutter, so what are you going to do there? you got to place it correctly here. People are fired up here. They know this is a big out. If they can get through this inning, they can score, get the lead. People who score first in the World Series win a lot. Unfortunately for Garcia and the Houston National fans, he hangs this one, and it goes... It goes a Cuban mile, whatever a Cuban mile is. I was going to say a country mile, but that's a Cuban mile. My goodness. My goodness. That one left the stadium over the train tracks, my people. He just saw too many off-speed pitches. And yeah, that one was middle too, so that helps. But the timing was there. The tunnel was there. I just thought, I just think he saw too many off-speed pitches. He needed some stuff up and in. And Maldonado, I think, knows that too. He needed to move him off. You start The pitch that really did it for me is that 3-2 uh, slider away. That was away. He still got the barrel too. I'm going to save this slow-mo. When he got the barrel to that one, it was time to go up and in because – and he tried to. He tried to. didn't get it up. Uh, when a guy starts leaning out over the plate like that and getting the barrel to the ball, you got to do something. Um, this one right here, as we'll see – I'm going to slow it down for you. That's that's a gift from the gods, as my friend Tori Hunter would say. Breaking ball, middle in. <laughs> oh, my God. Look at this. That's called opening the hips up, getting some clearance. 
And look, his hands are just going to go right into the slot there. Watch this. The elbow is already in there. Look at that barrel. Boop. Let's see how long it's going to go. Well, this is a slow-mo, so see you later. And he knows it. Everyone knows it. Mike's back there with his... What is that? A mouth guard, Mike? What are you doing, man? Braves and six. They go on to win. Look at this thing again. What an incredible at bat, an incredible game, an incredible prediction by yours truly. That's it for today. I hope you guys had a fun one. We've done a lot of these this season, man. We're winding down. I think there's going to be one a week from now on through the end of the year, and then we'll see where sequence goes. I appreciate everyone that's followed along and has had fun with it. You know, sometimes I try to teach stuff. Sometimes I try to showcase stuff. Whatever it is, it's all for you guys. So I'll catch you next Tuesday. Hope you guys are having uh, a great end to the week. Let's go weekends here. Peace.